I'm Roger Baker, Executive Director of the Stratfor Center for Applied Geopolitics at RAIN, a global center of excellence for geopolitical intelligence and analysis. Learn how you can put geopolitics to work for your organization at RAINNetwork.com. Hello and welcome to this episode of RAIN's Essential Geopolitics Podcast. Bangladesh will hold general elections on January 7th with the ruling Awami League cl- uh, aiming to clinch a fifth term for Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Tensions have risen in anticipation of this crucial election and turbulence will likely persist due to intense political discourse between parties. Here with me today is Misha Iqbal, Reign's South Asia analyst. Hi Misha, welcome to the podcast. Hi. Um, So to start us off, can you provide a little bit of a background on the current dynamics contributing to the tensions surrounding this election? Sure. So basically opposition parties like the Bangladesh Nationalist Party have been boycotting the elections as a means to delegitimize another likely win by the Awami League. This is due to allegations of electoral rigging and the lack of a neutral caretaker government to oversee these elections. However, Bangladesh's chief election commissioner urged all political parties to participate, assuring that the commission would employ essential steps to guarantee free and fair elections. Now, in the past, between 1991 to 2008, to curb power abuses, a caretaker system was in place where a nonpartisan administration would oversee elections. However, following the Awami League's win in 2008, the caretaker system was abolished in 2011 and sparked boycotts in the 2014 elections. Now in the 2018 elections, which was Bangladesh's last elections, opposition parties like the BNP participated. However, the Awami League claimed 96% of votes, securing 300 out of 350 directly elected parliament seats. And so the BNP denounced these outcomes with groups like Human Rights like groups like Human Rights Watch, raising concerns about alleged election misconduct, citing intimidation tactics, and rigging accusations. So this is why the BNP is now boycotting these upcoming elections. The current boycotts have resulted in frequent protests and blockades by the opposition, causing disruptions to transportation and business operations throughout Bangladesh. As a result, this has led to heavy government crackdown and violent clashes with security forces. According to reports, there has been an increase in election-related violence with thousands of opposition supporters arrested. In September, the Awami League passed the Cybersecurity Bill, underscoring the government's efforts to ensure its consolidation of power and weaken the opposition and suppress dissent. But civil society and rights groups allege that democratic norms and practices are suppressed as a result of this harsh legislation. Because definitions of offenses are so vague, the bill permits arbitrary punitive action that enables the government to pursue their desired political objectives. The Wami League has also faced allegations of spreading disinformation. In September 2023, an AFP investigation uncovered that multiple articles praising the government's policies were actually penned with writers with questionable credentials using fabricated images and potentially by non-existent authors. And in December, the Financial Times revealed that pro-government news outlets have been endorsing AI-generated disinformation and deepfakes that propagate false narratives against the Bangladesh Nationalist Party. So overall, there has been a lot of concern of democratic backsliding and the lack of free and fair elections in Bangladesh under the leadership of the Awami League. So this has led to protests, boycotts, and has led to social unrest and greater political instability. So it seems like this election is, and the discourse leading up to this election is rife with kind of controversy, controversies and uh, people seem to be very upset. Can you provide, or can you explain um, whether you think these protests will continue after the elections? Yeah, so first of all, like I mentioned, It is likely that the Awami League will win in general elections, especially amid the BNP boycotting running in the election. At the very most, we might see some politicians associated with the BNP run as independents um, in the elections. However, this will not challenge the Awami League's winning prospects. So with that in mind, an Awami League win 
will likely lead to continued election-related protest, risking, as I mentioned before, persistent social unrest, business and transportation disruptions, and exacerbating economic grievances. However, there has been a lot of detainment of opposition activists and politicians. So due to, t- due to detention of several opposition leaders and activists, the protests could face slowdowns. And we are seeing some of that now. Also amid harsh crackdowns, arrests, and job losses, ongoing economic challenges may intensify concerns about the increasing cost of living, further impacting the momentum of these protests. So some protesters may not be as inclined to join. At what point do you think, I guess, Western governments would get involved, especially given that the U.S. and EU have commented on elections in Bangladesh in the past? Yeah, so government crackdowns on protests and these allegations aren't unprecedented, but the recent surge in mass arrests and political instability has drawn the attention of the U.S. and the European Union, who have recently urged for free and fair elections while expressing concern regarding alleged human rights abuses. And like you said, they have made comments on this in the past. Just to give some brief background, in October 2023, Peter Haas, the U.S. ambassador to Bangladesh, encouraged the Awami League to initiate talks with opposition parties to address political unrest. Now, had the Awami League listened to the suggestion, there might be a different attitude towards um, U.S. involvement. However, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina dismissed the suggestion. And, you know, Haas had also emphasized that restricting peaceful assembly and internet access hampers the democratic election process. And he later faced death threats from the UAMI League members over these statements. And, you know, the U.S. has previously imposed sanctions um, on Bangladesh. In December 2021, the U.S. Treasury imposed sanctions on Bangladesh's counterterrorism parliamentary unit due to severe allegations of human rights violations. And in May 2023, the U.S. State Department unveiled a visa policy that limits issuance for Bangladeshi individuals that undermine the democratic election process in Bangladesh. So the imposition of U.S. involvement, Western involvement, and sanctions are not unheard of. Um, And, you know, with Bangladesh's ongoing political turmoil, coupled with Awami League's crackdown on demonstration, there has been a fear that there might be some economic sanctions put in place particularly on the ready-made garment industry, which is a vital contributor to Bangladesh's GDP and accounts for more than 80% of its annual exports. However, the likelihood of the U.S. implementing such sanctions has limitations. Bangladesh is the third largest exporter of ready-made garments to the U.S., so this will pose potential risk of economic slowdowns and supply interruptions not only in Bangladesh, but also for Western companies that rely on the Bangladeshi RMG sector. Additionally, Bangladesh's non-aligned status makes it a battleground among major powers, further reducing U.S. interests for painful sanctions. In the past, China and Russia have accused the U.S. of interference, and India has labeled the elections as an internal matter. And India highly values its alliance with the Awami League, and so moves to impose sanctions could potentially drive Bangladesh closer to China, especially as both countries vie for regional dominance. So the nature of relationship between India and Bangladesh and China and Bangladesh might play a role in determining whether sanctions are imposed by the U.S., given broad, the broad goal of limiting China's sphere of influence and their strong allyship with India. Overall, we might see some comments about trying to commit to free and fair elections, but the likelihood of sanctions is still up for debate. Wow. So then if we take a closer look uh, internally uh, as Bangladesh grapples with an economic crisis, and it has recently secured a second tranche of of the IMF bailout fund, um, how do you think elections are going to impact Bangladesh's economic and therefore like and then related humanitarian outlook? Yeah, so you know political unrest leading 
up to the election and after will pose risks to Bangladesh's already fragile economy and hinder economic productivity. We've already seen this with the ongoing protests that have been happening. According to the Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industry, each day of protests and blockades cost the economy around $588 million. So as protests continue and business and supply chain operations are disrupted, this will present even more economic slowdowns, especially for an already struggling economy that will exacerbate grievances. And so, you know, a large part of Bangladesh's economic recovery is implementing IMF requested reforms to increase tax revenue, rationalize expenditure, promote macroeconomic stability, and bolster external resilience. However, aligning with these IMF-related conditions entail unpopular actions like cutting social programs, eliminating subsidies, and raising taxes. And these steps have previously triggered sporadic protests in Bangladesh in this past year. And so further implications of these measures may incite additional economic-related protests in the months ahead. Like mentioned before, the risk of protests poses potential disruptions to transportation, supply chains, business, and so also risks violence, cl- violent clashes with security forces as the government cracks down on dissent. So that adds to that um, concern over human rights concerns, human rights violations, clash- violent clashes with security forces. Also, ongoing political instability could pose constraints on Bangladesh's willingness and ability to enact contentious reforms in the near term, leading governments to potentially lessen their implementation to satisfy the population to pacify potential protests. However, this might put Bangladesh in a tricky position with the IMF and might affect their success in accessing future bailout funds. Thanks for your insights, Misha, and for coming on the podcast. Thanks. You can read more of Misha's analyses by subscribing to our geopolitical intelligence product, Rain Worldview. Our suite of risk products allow clients to access the insights and analyses they need to make more informed decisions and drive better risk management outcomes. You can sign up or learn more at our website, rainnetwork.com. That's R-A-N-E network.com. I'm Emma Kami. Thanks for listening.